Brothers and sisters, please give me the privilege of knowing exactly the generations before us, primarily the young. It is difficult to know what age should be the point of demarcation, but I'll try it this way. All persons who are present in this building tonight who are under 21 or 21 and under, just so we can luxuriate in your glorious presence, I ask you to stand now, 21 and under. There is hope for the world, and you are the symbols, the expression of that hope. Now, I'd like to say to the committee that invited me to have a few words to say tonight before maybe more words tomorrow, especially to Shannon Daly Harris and her committee, thank you for sending me the two texts which have just been read here today. First, a testament, New Testament parable, and a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. After I read the email that said, that's the text, that's the inspiration, that's what we're going to be focusing upon, the strangest thing happened to me. I had this urging I mean, a strong urging that said, get up and go down to Broadway and buy tickets for Porgy and Best. <laughs> that was a strange thing. Why do I need to go down and buy tickets to Gershwin's Porgy and Best? After going, I understood perfectly why I should see that musical before talking to you and especially the young people who are here today. I think I have received a revelation about why it is that we are here. Difficult times, economic crisis, trouble with the weather, violence breaking out all over, why would 3,000 of us converge upon this place? There's some trouble in the land, and we want, no, not, not we want, we are determined to do something about it. Well, after seeing that presentation on Broadway, I think, I've got it. What's wrong with our situation today? What is leading to the continuation of brutality and violence, not only in Colorado, but in Washington, and in New York, and in Cincinnati, perhaps? What's wrong? I think I got it. During the musical, you will recall, perhaps, how Sporting Life sang a song that said, it ain't necessarily so. It ain't necessarily so. The things that you're liable to read in the Bible, it ain't necessarily so. Perhaps Sporting Life was not just referring to Jonah who lived in a well or either David before Goliath, or maybe just Methuselah lived 900 years, what if he had heard the text read here today? A text from Deuteronomy that stutters justice. It says justice, and then it says it again and again. And for those who read the whole book, it's not just in that 16th chapter. Justice is in the first chapter, and every now and then in that chapter, you will read that if you really want to have a good life, 
If you want your nation to be strong and to enjoy the blessings of the land that it has received, there must be, almost like a mantra, there must be justice, there must be justice, so that you may live long and enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Well, there's also this story from the gospel that talks about a woman like the sister who read it reminding me of the Roman Catholic sisters that just keep on coming and will not go back. She kept coming and coming. Avenge me of my adversary. Give me justice. He said, forget it. Send that woman away. And she kept on coming. Until at last he says, this woman is troubling me so much. Whatever she wants, give her the justice she's looking for. Let she wear me out with the constancy of her appeal. Brothers and sisters, suppose sporting life had heard these words. Not only from Rabbi Meyer or the sister who read the gospel text, but each reference from our various religious tradition. Did you listen? If you really can't remember all of it, just summarize. All of the major religious traditions say that God stands for justice. God has built justice into the universe. If you want to have a good life, you got to make sure there's justice, there's justice, there's justice. Well, it occurs to me that sporting life might say about these verses, it ain't necessarily so. The things that you are liable to read in the Bible, whether or not it's from the sacred scriptures of the Quran, or whether it's from Buddha's writings, or whether it is from the various readings you've heard here today, he might say the things you read in these sexry, sacred texts, not necessarily so. So now I know why I had to go. My primary purpose here tonight in these few brief moments I've got is to start an argument with sporting life. I want to I, I, I wanna let him know, brother, if it's about justice, it is so. I, I wish you would repeat that after me. It is so. And since he has necessarily, it is necessarily so. There must be justice. And Marion Wright Edelman, guess what? I think sporting life must have gone by the Congress and has told them that, look, it's partisan bickering that's the order of the day. Forget about health care. Forget about taxation that's fair. Forget about equalization of opportunity for those whom we call aliens. Forget about it. I think he must have gone by Washington and held a secret meeting and told the Congress people, it ain't necessarily so that there's got to be justice. But I'm here to let it be known it is necessarily so. Let me tell you why it is so. Sport and life. Don't you know that life itself is relational? Sport and life, didn't you study biology? Didn't you learn that even the basic unit in our body, which is a cell, has its nucleus, its material, and it has a membrane, but that that cell cannot live unless the membrane is, and this is the biology teacher, is semi-permeable. It means that even a cell has to be able to hold stuff in and then let stuff out because it is the movement of the fluids and the various chemicals in and out that makes it possible for a cell to become a tissue and a tissue to become an organ and for the organ to become a body. Sport and life, didn't you study biology? Didn't it let you know that you 
cannot have a healthy body unless there's justice. Equal distribution. If 99% of the resources of the body are bypassed and 1% holds up all the resources in the body, don't you know that you can't... Oh, that's, that's injustice in the body. And if things are imbalanced, you got a whole lot of blood down here, but none for up here. Don't you know that that's injustice in the body? And the body is not going to keep on keeping on. Sport and life. Don't, didn't you read the report from the book called Spirit Level from some sociologists in London that says they have studied county by county and that the presence of inequality is directly proportional to the dysfunctionality of the community. They've charted it out. The wider the inequality, the greater the crime, the greater the misery, the greater the violence, the greater the alienation. Oh, let me tell you, sport and life, it is necessarily so. You got to have justice. Well, there is yet another reason. And that is because the creator, the creator, the one that made us, the one that called us into community has determined there must be justice. And don't come up with any righteous language. In the Bible and in all our sacred texts, there is a cognate relationship between righteousness and justice. No justice no righteousness. I don't care what you call yourself. I don't care what your religion is. I don't care what your spirituality is. No justice. No righteousness. Oh, let me not get lost before I tell you the single thing that I hope you will begin to look at throughout this week. Where is the energy to convince the Congress, the mayors of our cities, big businesses, the so-called powers to be, how do you get them to see that justice is necessarily so? Oh, I tell you, I would like to scare the rest of the Americans who have become so cavalier about justice. I'd like to tell them that, hey, hey, there could be a relationship between injustice and environmental degradation. Or you worry about the hurricanes, you worry about the tornadoes, you worry about all the heat. Hey, it's a justice thing, y'all, that if justice does not prevail, even Mother Nature gets an attitude. <laughs> There's got to be justice in the land. Well, let me put it this way. This woman that kept on coming back and coming back and coming back and insisting on justice. I don't know what the particular problem was. Maybe it was a tax problem. Maybe they were taking more taxes from her. And those who had lots and lots of resources were trying to get breaks all along the way. Or maybe it was a health care problem she had. I don't know what the problem was. Maybe she could not get the care that she needed. Maybe it was employment. Maybe she couldn't get a job because maybe she was a widow. Or, or maybe, maybe her ethnicity was from some other region that was not affirmed by the powers that be. Maybe it was for the education of her children who would not get an opportunity if they could not get a decent education. Maybe the problem was about housing. Maybe it was about the gangs in the street. Maybe, oh, 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 maybe it was that uh, there was a drug problem that was addicting the people and creating inhospitable space. And speaking of drugs, that got me back to sporting life. Oh yeah, I don't know what that stuff is that that sporting life was putting on the back of Bess's head. I, I, I'm not sure what it was, but it was a toxic substance that robbed Bess of the capacity, Marion. Bess 
gave up caring for a baby, left the baby in a basket to start sniffing and then made her way off with sport and life. I think I'm on to something now. Do you know that if you get a hold of that abusing substance, it can cause you to lose a sense of responsibility and injustice and all hell breaks out even on earth. Let me tell you what that is and then I'm through. Let me, do you see? Some folks have been sniffing materialism, money as the measure of all things. Some folks been sniffing consumerism, exceptionalism, hedonism, pleasure at any cost, egotism, imperialism, tribalism. I say that because folks don't like you to use the word racism, but it's still there. And free marketism. Folks been sniffing and sniffing and sniffing and have forgotten about justice. That imperils the world. The world is in real trouble. The nation is imperiled. Somebody had better cry out. So this woman, thank God for her. This woman went before the judge. And I thank God when she first came, they said, the judge doesn't have time for you. So she said, take the judge this note. So they took the note. And this is what it said. Justice is the air I breathe. I can't live without it. It's not enough to complain and grieve. I've got to do something about it. I'm going to strategize and organize. I'm going to vote and take a stand. I'm going to pray each day and agitate until justice is the law of the land. And the, the, the judge read it, says, forget it. She was there tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day. And he finally said, ma'am, bring her in here. They brought her. He said, what do you, you got to say? He said, I say, got to say the same thing I put on the note. Justice is the air I breathe. I can't live without it. It's not enough to complain and grieve. I've got to do something about it. I'm going to strategize and organize. I'm going to vote and take a stand. I'm going to pray each day and agitate until justice is the law of the land. Marion, I think that's why we're here, to join that woman in making it clear. Folks, this is not optional. It is necessarily so that there must be justice.